I think we are having some kind of glitch. Just a moment. Okay. We'll go live. Hi, everyone. Monster India presents Triumph, India's largest diversity and inclusion event, uh, which will be uh, going on from you know uh, 5th July to 18th July. And we're going to kickstart this entire campaign you know, with some exciting events. And, and we have uh, a great, uh, you know, YouTuber and influencer with us to take you through this journey. And he'll be speaking about a lot of things. Let me take a minute to introduce him. So we have Dhawal Patel here. Dhawal Patel is a software engineer from Bloomberg. And he's a YouTuber. He has 320K plus subscribers. He does a lot of videos on AI, ML, data analytics, and, you know, he believes in the strong uh, feeling that anyone can code, right? And, uh, and he, you know, he likes a lot uh, about this particular belief and he does a lot of videos around it. And it's an honor to have him today on this uh, podium. You know, we're kickstarting the entire campaign with Dhawal. Welcome, Dhawal. Uh, how does it feel? Oh, it feels great. I think <clears throat> I like the whole theme of, about diversity and inclusion. We're just, before this meeting, we we're just talking about how we should be mindful about using our language, you know, when we have people who doesn't know that language. So the diversity and inclusion is becoming a big theme nowadays. And I'm happy that Monster India is doing some special events around this theme. And I'm really glad to share my thoughts on data science today. Yeah, great. Uh, you know, we're really honored to have you there. And uh, uh, I think the stage is up to you for uh, the rest of the session. All right, great. So I'm going to just share my screen here really quickly and we can get started. Uh, but overall, what we'll be talking about today is data science. Data science is becoming a buzzword nowadays. Forbes magazine a couple of years back said that data science is the sexiest job in the century. After that, there has been so much hype around data science and so many people want to join data science as a career. And we will be mainly talking about if you want to kickstart your career in data science, what are the steps you need to take? And before you do that, you really need to know about what data science is and what are different career tracks that you can uh, pursue in, in this field. So we'll be talking about all of that. And in the end, we'll have some question and answer. OK, so let me share my screen and I'll start with introducing myself uh, uh, Nitin already introduced me. I'm a data engineer uh, and a data science en enthusiast. Uh, I live in New Jersey, USA, one hour away from New York, and have worked with uh, big companies such as NVIDIA and Bloomberg. And just a disclaimer, all the opinions I'm expressing here are my own. I need to do that uh, so that, you know, we are good in terms of compliance. So whatever I'm expressing today, uh, it has nothing to do with my employer. All right. So I also run this Code Basics YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, search for Code Basics, you'll find my channel where I teach data structure algorithm, Python programming, deep learning, machine learning. One of my popular tutorial playlists is on Pandas, which is a de facto framework for data cleaning and exploration uh, if you're trying to pursue your data science career. All right. So that's just my hobby, but yeah, my I have a nine to six job as well. And I, I, I saw a lot of real life problem around data. So what the heck is data science? First of all, Let, let's try to understand it. You know, you people just start learning fancy frameworks without understanding what data science is, what are the, what are the career opportunities and how they can fit themselves. So the most important thing is you need to see if you are a fit for a data science career, if you have an interest in this. So therefore, it's important to understand what data science is. And I'm going to give you a very naive, primitive example here. Let's say you are a rich person. You have two restaurants, one in New York, San Diego. It's a little food franchise business, you know, where you have two, two restaurants in two different parts of US. And you have all your monthly revenues coming in in some Excel file. It could be Excel file, it could be MySQL database, whatever. When you look at data in Excel file, you know, as a human, 
it's hard to crunch that data. So what people have been doing traditionally is they use visualization. And in Microsoft Excel, you can plot a simple bar chart like this, where you can compare revenues of New York and San Diego restaurants side by side. When you look at this picture, the quick insight that you get is in the month of June to October, which is usually summer months here in US, the sales of New York restaurant is less compared to San Diego. The picture is telling you a beautiful story. It's not really a beautiful story. So you, you should be a little concerned as a business owner why the sales are declining. So what this quick visualization gave you was an insight, an insight into your business where you figured out, okay, NYC restaurant is performing poorly in the summer. Hence, I need to run a special promotion. You know, you can do some different type of analytics and figure out why it is doing poorly. But the idea is there is a data and there is some tool. So the tool here was simple bar chart. Using that, you draw an insight and you use insight, that insight to make a business decision. So data science is basically a process of getting insights from data. It is as simple as that. Don't think data science is a new thing. If you are using Microsoft Excel, you have been doing data science already. So data science has been there. People were doing data science in Microsoft Excel since many years, 20 years. Okay. So Excel was a de facto standard for doing data science. And by the way, the example I gave you again was very primitive. You can do so many other things, but over the last five, 10 years, because of social media, because of internet adoption, because of IT adoption in general, because of IoT devices and so on, the data volume has been growing constantly. So now when you want to do any analysis, you are talking about big data. You know, there is this whole paradigm called big data. And when you have, let's say, 1 million records in Excel, you know what happens, right? You might have seen this pic beautiful picture uh, previously. Microsoft Excel just stops crashing. It just st stops working. So the idea is when your data goes beyond certain point, uh, you cannot use primitive tools. You need to use sophisticated tools. And what are those tools? Well, programming languages such as Python and R. These are the two most popular languages, programming languages, if you want to pursue your career in data science. Then comes databases. You need to know SQL. In, in terms of databases, you can have Apache Hadoop as your big data store or Apache Spark as a distributed compute framework because your regular compute framework is not going to work just because of the sheer volume of data. Then you are hearing all these terms about BI tools such as Power BI Tableau and you're always wondering oh, what the heck are these? So these are the tools which are more like an Excel on steroids. You know, that's, if someone asked me to define these tools in one sentence, that, that's the definition I would give. And then when it comes to predictive modeling, you have machine learning. And scikit-learn is a popular machine learning framework for doing statistical machine learning models. If you want to go into neural networks and deep learning, then TensorFlow and PyTorch are the most two most popular frameworks. So now you have big data, you have all these amazing tools, but when you look at these tools, you will be like, wow, there is just so much to learn, right? One person cannot do all of this. And for that reason, there are different career tracks in data science field. And these are the three main career tracks, data engineer, data analyst, and data scientist. Now, what is the difference between the three? I will explain you by giving again a very simple example. Let's say you are running a wireless store business. In US, it could be Verizon. In, in India, it will be Reliance Geo, et cetera. And when you have multiple of these stores, uh, you will be having some software. You know, 
when person comes and buys iPhone or Vivo phone, you have a computer where you enter all the information generated invoice. So you have traditional software. It is called POS system. So you have POS software and POS software will have some front end, some database, and, and the database will have all these records. Then usually when people buy phone, they buy insurance as well. So for insurance tracking, maybe you have a different software just to track your insurance. And that database will store information on the insurance. Now, when you have this kind of three tier application where you have front end, back end, and database, uh, that's your traditional software application. And the database that you use typically either is Oracle, MySQL, you know, and that is called structured data because you have rows, columns, you have structured data. And by the way, I don't know if you just noticed, you have some celebrities coming to your store. You see Akshay Kumar, Virat Kohli and all of that. Okay, so uh, let's say you have this amazing business going on and now we want to perform some data analytics. There could be unstructured data coming to a business such as you have multiple stores. Let's say in Bangalore city, you have five stores and you are running a customer satisfaction survey. And these surveys are run on not in pen, you know? So you give these flyers, these survey papers to your incoming customer, they fill out all the survey, you scan those documents and you store them on some Amazon, let's say S3 store, you know, on some somewhere on cloud on, on your Google drive. Now I'm a business owner and I have the data stored in POS software, insurance software, and survey, which is just a PDF file store on my Google Drive. I could have a number of questions, you know, for my business, uh, given all this data. Okay, which store is performing the best in terms of device and insurance sales total out of my five stores in Bangalore? In terms of customer satisfaction, which store and employees rank the best? Because some store might be doing more sales but let's say they are not providing good quality service. Usually they are correlated, but there could still be a case where there is this other store where employee, uh, the customer satisfaction is highest, but the sales are not that high. And then holiday season is coming, okay, which region is going to have maximum traffic? Let's say some Diwali occasion is coming and out of five stores, if I know that this particular store will have maximum traffic, maybe I can put a few more uh, people, you know? So you want to, as a business owner, you want to get questions on this answer. Now as, a, now as a founder of this company, I go to my IT head and my IT head will have different parties involved. So now we'll talk about different roles in data science. So the first role will be application developer. You know, the software engineers who built my three tier application. Then you might have heard this term OLAP and OLTP. OLTP is online transactional processing. So see, these are all fancy words. It is simple. OLTP is this databases. The databases where you have your mission critical data stored is OLTP. Your everyday sales transactions are stored. You know, all those transactional data is stored in these databases. This is OLTP. When you want to perform analytics, what companies will do is they will not perform analytics on these database directly. Because if your data scientist writes a complicated query and if it slows down this database, then it will affect your day-to-day -day business. Your ongoing transactions will be impacted. So traditionally what people do is they build a data warehouse. And for building data warehouse, they hire data engineer. So data engineers are software engineers only but they have specialization in building data warehouse. They know how to do ETL and they know data engineering principles. And they perform something called ETL. ETL is another jargon that you hear every now and then. ETL is nothing but extract, transform, load. You might have 10 columns in this database, in this POS database, but you might need only five columns for doing your analytics. So then you will write your typical select query, select these five columns from this DB and store the, uh, extract the data and let's say uh, store it here. Now you might want to remove some outliers. You might want to do some currency conversion, you know, all of that. So you'll do all of that as part of your ETL and store data in data warehouse. And then 
once the data warehouse is ready now comes data analyst so data analyst will use the tools such as sql python tableau excel and so on and they will be building reports they will be building reports that the business owners or business managers need okay and these reports can answer questions such as which store is performing best or in terms of customer satisfaction which store and employees rank the best so they can answer these two question but the third question just notice just notice carefully the third question third question is about predictive analytics you want to know which store during my upcoming diwali session is going to perform the best and that is something that cannot be done by traditional tools you know you need machine learning for that and that's when data scientist comes into picture so by the way data scientists can do all the things that data analysts can do so they also know tableau sql whatever but they know this one additional skill of machine learning statistics they are good in statistics math visualization and they can build uh, predictive analytics using these tools so you know if i have to give you a quick summary data engineer is someone who makes a or who prepares the recipes for your food let's say you are, you want to make a pizza for pizza you need need vegetables cheese your dough whatever data engineer is the one who will prepare all these raw ingredients and data scientist or data analyst are the people who build a final recipe out of it so you see both the roles are important data engineers usually get paid higher than data scientist and analyst nowadays you know when i'm talking with my youtube subscriber everyone wants to become data scientist because data scientist is a good buzzword but understand that in most of the companies data engineers they get paid higher than data scientist and data analyst just to summarize these three roles in terms of the skills you need to know data engineer would know data modeling warehouse different big data hadoop kafka spark type of tools SQL, no SQL, MongoDB. You know, Python, Java, Scala are the most popular languages around that. So these are the tools that a data engineer would know. Data analyst would know certain other set of tools. So you can take a screenshot of this picture, maybe use that for a later purpose. Or, or I have a special video, by the way, on my channel, which talks about the difference between these three roles in in a, in depth. So if you want to understand that, go check out my video. but i will give you a quick summary between data analyst and data scientist role which is data scientists know all the things that data analysts know it's almost like if you want to become data scientist data analyst is first step plus they know some additional skills and then they become data scientist all right now many of you who are watching uh, this right now you will be like okay i am a mechanical engineer can i become data analyst data scientist yes you can data see data science is not a separate domain it's it's a it's a discipline that can be applied in petroleum engineering mechanical engineering hr accounting so doesn't matter your what what, what your background is you all can become data analyst or data scientist you just need to follow the right discipline and learn things uh, step by step and i have uh in the interest of time i am not going to go too much into depth uh, on on the exit steps that you need to take but i will quickly point you to my video so if you go to youtube and search for code basics data analyst road map you'll find these two videos the first one is the 3 months road map for a data analyst the second video is a 6 month road map for a data scientist and i have mentioned all the free tools that you can use to follow this uh, road map and what i'll do is i have created a github page with all the necessary links and by the way all these resources are free so if you have laptop and internet you can you can learn all data analyst data scientist skills for free without spending a single rupee i will quickly go over the uh github page which i have created so and i have mentioned i have mentioned these things in detail in my videos so watch out those videos if you want to know in depth uh, in depth 
but I will give you a quick overview. So let's say you want to become data analyst. Okay. You want to start absolutely from zero background. You don't know anything about it. You are from mechanical engineering background, like a totally different background. You can become data analyst. And this is the roadmap that you need to follow three month roadmap uh, to gain the necessary skills. See, after three months, you cannot say I have learned data analytics. I have been doing this for 10, more than 10 years. And I still think I have not learned anything. Learning is a journey. It's not a destination. But this three month learning roadmap will give you a solid foundation on which you can keep on building new skills. So you would have, the, the first most important thing is excellent statistics. Okay. So you spend first two weeks in learning excellent statistics. I have mentioned different tools here, different resources, different YouTube channels that you can use to learn these concepts. Okay. And how much you want to learn? Well, that I have mentioned in my YouTube video. So if you watch that video to video, I will go over each of these resources and, and I will say, okay, you need to learn only these 10 concepts. Correct. Because statistics itself might take you five years. It's a big field, but you need to know just basics such as some fundamentals of inferential and uh, descriptive statistics, you know, no, some distribution, some probability theories, uh, concepts like that. Then you spend next three weeks in learning BI tools. These BI tools, uh, there are many BI tools, by the way, Tableau and Power BI are the two most popular one. So you should learn either Tableau or Power BI. I kind of like Power BI because Tableau is very expensive and Power BI is Microsoft tool. You know, it's kind of integrated into the whole Microsoft uh, ecosystem. So I like Power BI, but you can pick any. There are other tools such as SciSense, you know, Alteryx, so many tools. You can just learn one tool and then learning other tool becomes easily. So don't worry about learning like 10 tools. For Power BI, I have this personal finance project and code basic sales inside project. So this project series, in this project series, what I'm doing is uh, basically I'm explaining you the whole life cycle. Let's say you join data analyst position in a big company and you are given a project. How would you execute a project? Your first, first part will be problem statement. Then you do your data discovery. You talk to software engineers, you figure out your data discovery part. You collect it, then you do your data analysis using SQL. Then you do data cleaning and ETL in part four. The part, part five is building dashboard and report. Part six is getting feedback from the stakeholders. Seven is publishing a report. And eight, eight is accessing dashboard in a mobile application. And nine is building a version two based on feedback. So this, if you look, if you follow these nine steps, it, this is exactly what happens in the industry. You know, I have been working in this industry for so many years. This is how corporate, big corporates execute the projects. So when you, when you do this project, you get a feel as if you are working in some company and doing this project, okay? So that therefore, this project-based learning approach is very, very essential in building new skills. Then you build... Uh, uh, spend weeks six and seven in in uh, learning about Python. So how do you learn Python? Well, Python, again, I have a playlist. So you just talk, you learn about reading, writing files. You have to just learn basics, you know? So that's why I say first 16 videos. You don't have to go too much depth into multiple inheritance, iterated generators. It's okay, okay? As a data analyst, you should know only basics. Many times people ask me this question, do I need to know data structures and algorithm? No. Uh, if you're targeting data analyst, analyst career, data structure and algorithms are not needed. Then, uh, the, see, when you're learning anything, the most important thing is practice. So if you watch a video or you read a book, that's not sufficient. You need to practice. So at the end of each, my, each of my video, I give this exercise. So let's say you are 
learning Python, for example. And you learn Python, now you want to practice it. So you have to, so this is like reading and writing files. And then uh, let's see, there will be an exercise here. So exercises are kind of very important. I'm just trying to find the exercises. Okay, so one second. So this is the main code and the exercise. Okay, I think you can find exercises here. So let's say I learned about reading and writing file. It's important that you do simple analytics. For example, you have all the stock prices, you know, price earning, and now you want to calculate the PE ratio. So when you do this exercise in Python, your fundamentals become really solid. So practice is a very, very important thing uh, if you're serious about your career. Then comes data cleaning part. So in data cleaning, uh, the most popular things that they use is NumPy, Pandas, and data visualization libraries such as Matplotlib and Seaborn. So you need to have knowledge on all these tools. Again, I have mentioned all these free resources here. So just follow those. Then week 10 to 12 is uh, SQL and MongoDB. As a data analyst, you will be writing SQL queries. So SQL is the must. If you go for data analyst interview, they will ask you SQL questions. So you have to prepare well for SQL. Okay, and then there are some soft skills. You can join some Discord server, make, make uh, partners, almost like uh, buddies with whom you can uh, study together because you know it's like going to a gym if you go to gym alone you might not be very much motivated but if you have a couple of friends who are joining you with gym you feel motivated you know you go there often so similarly if you're learning python let's say just make a group and if you can't make a group with your local friends you can find people online such as joining this discord server if you join this discord server uh, let me show you really quickly that server has the um, group finder, almost like a, see if you go here, there's a partner and group finder chat. So here you can find partners and make a group and then study. Then there is this data science roadmap. Uh, if you are targeting data scientist career, now data scientist career has a lot of overlap with data analysts. So you'll see things like, okay, excellent statistics. That's common. Python is common. NumPy, Pandas, that is common. What is different is machine learning and deep learning. These are the additional skills you need as a data scientist. And of course, you need to be a little stronger in math and statistics compared to data analyst. And then SQL, MongoDB, BI tools, soft skills, all of that uh, remains the same. So overall, uh, the thing I want to tell everyone is that data science is not a different branch. Data science is a discipline that you can use. It's, a, it's like a sub branch in all the branches. If you are a mechanical engineer, mechanical engineering problems can be solved by data science. You are a petroleum engineer, petroleum engineering companies hire data scientists who have petroleum engineering background, by the way. As a data scientist, you need to have a domain knowledge. So do not think that if I'm petroleum engineer or mechanical engineer, or even if I'm MBA or HR, or even if I'm BCom graduate, don't think that I cannot switch to data science. You can. And the time you spend in studying in college, that is not going to go in waste because the domain knowledge is very important. People don't realize, people just focus on tool skills. I always say that the core skills are even more important than the tool skills. So I, I let me quickly show you a diagram which I made on tool skills and core skills. So I'll quickly bring that up. Just give me a second. Okay, so I'm just looking 
just trying to find that picture. So I'll quickly share my screen. So I shared that picture recently in my uh, LinkedIn feed. Yes, this is the picture. So you see in this picture, the core skills is business understanding, analytical mindset and communication. Now you, you develop business understanding if you are in that domain. So if you're a petroleum engineer, you have spent less than four years studying petroleum engineer, engineering, you have built some domain skills. You understand the terminology of petroleum engineering. So that part is very important. And then Python, SQL, machine learning, math. See, these are surrounded. These are like tool skills. So do not think that, okay, I did four years of mechanical engineering. I wasted my time. No, you have not wasted your time. You can use those skills, those domain knowledge and learn the extra tools to kind of combine two and uh, build a bright future for yourself. All right, so that's all I had. I hope you found all those tips useful. If you want to get an access to the GitHub page, which I shared with data analyst roadmap and data science roadmap, go to YouTube and search for code basics space data analyst roadmap or code basics space data science roadmap. You will find my videos in the video description. I have given the link of these roadmap pages. So that's all I had, uh, Nitin. Uh, I think if if you have questions, we can maybe start taking questions from people now. Yeah. Uh, hey, Devil. That was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I guess uh, uh, I I could see why you have so many followers on your YouTube. Right? You explain things very relevant to you know the common man, so that everyone can understand. You you put a pizza over there to just make it so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that really is great. And that is the reason I say that anyone can code Nitin because I'm not just saying this to increase my followers. By the way, I have monetization off on my YouTube channel. I do not earn a single rupee on my channel right now. Okay. So uh, my whole goal was to motivate people. I'm not running uh, code my YouTube channel for commercial goals. My whole goal is to tell people that they can do it. Sometimes, you know, all it takes is to go to a person and say that you can do it. So okay. I see so many people, they, oh, I tried Python programming. It's not my cup of tea, but wait, have you followed right set of resources? You know, have you given your enough try? People just keep on reading books, but they don't practice enough. If you practice little, learn little, practice little, and learn from right resources, which can explain you things in a better way, then okay. I truly believe anyone can code. It is yeah. it is the strong belief that I have in my heart. Right. I mean, uh, I am I, with you, Dhawadiya, right? See, uh, it's very evident that this is, entire thing is driven by passion, right? And I can see the lot of free resources and you're just giving out knowledge, whatever you know, right? Out free for everyone to be, you know, uh, you know getting into this space, right? And, and someone rightly said, data is the new fuel, right? And this is the new job. And my so, you know, my brother you know, on that on that comment, you know, Nitin, my brother was saying, okay, data is new oil. And I told him data is new gold, actually. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, you know, everything really works. You know, people are crazy about the data, uh, you know, data sciences and, and everything, every job opportunity linked to it. So, uh, you hmm. know, we have uh, some questions here, right? Sure. Uh, uh, and this is specifically to AI and, you know, machine learning, right? Huh. And, you know, when people think about AI and ML, it's very futuristic, right? And yes. know, people people really, you know, AI, ML, they really expect a bot, you know, someone like Sophia, right, you know, huh. doing things. But hmm. if, if someone would, you know, want to search for a job in those sectors, right, what mm -hmm. would the job titles usually be? All right. There are so many job titles, first of all. Right. So AI ML, uh, the, 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 best, the, the most popular role is machine learning engineer. Right. 
So they can search for machine learning engineer. They can search for data scientist because data scientists also do machine learning. Yeah. In some companies, uh, I have a friend in a Two Sigma hedge fund and her role is data science engineer, right? right? So that's kind of like a very unique role. Then there could be, there, there could be different role titles such as principal, you know, I was just going through some resume and principal innovation scientist, something like that. So there are fancy roles, but the most, two most popular ones are data scientist and machine learning engineer. I would say this, if someone is looking for a job, do not go too much by title. Read the description, you know, right. look at what company is doing. Right. Talk to people who are already working in that company or better who are already working in that department. And how do you find these people? Well, LinkedIn. So if I have a job, let's say data science engineer in company X in Bangalore, go to LinkedIn and there is a tab in LinkedIn called people search. Search data science engineer, Bangalore, whatever company, you will find people doing exact role in that exact company. Right. So then talk to those people, you know, of course there are, there are ways you can reach out to people like you send a nice, very well-crafted LinkedIn message saying that, okay, I learned that you're working as this in this company, you, you're doing an amazing job and I, I, I seek your guidance. Uh, let me know, I know you are very busy. People are busy, right? Like, say in today's world, no one wants to help you for free. <laughs> so you have to be really respectful and write a very nice message so that the other person connects with you. Right. And when they connect with you, they will actually tell you what the, what that role is doing. Because many times I've seen the role is machine learning engineer or, or let's say the role is data scientist. Okay. And all that person would be doing is some analytics in, 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 my, in, in Microsoft Excel. Right. This is true. Many companies, they don't use AI. They hire data scientists and data scientists will be doing their data science in, you know, Excel or some basic Python pandas and that's it. They might not be building the models. So don't go by titles, uh, look at the description because in the description, they will exactly tell you that we have this X product and we are using NLP to revolutionize this product and so on. And once you read the description, try to connect with folks who are working in that company. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really great piece of advice uh, uh, the world, right people usually go for this you know fancy titles right i need to be called so and so but yeah. you know it's essentially a requirement that you know you need to go and read the description you need to understand you need to make the work look fancy not the title right i mean that's a really great piece of advice and uh, so one one interesting question is that you know uh, how would this ai you know and the data sciences uh, going to transform in future what do you vision as in, if you were to sit today and think about, you know, what it would look like in the future, you know, you know, what's that landscape? Can you just paint as a picture? Yeah. So the future is going to look, be very, very interesting because AI and data science adoption is not that high in the industry, even today. Right. You know, I have some friends who are running businesses. Uh, I know one company who is running multi-million dollar business here in Long Island. Right. And when I, when I talk to these folks and when I see the tools that they are using, they're still using ancient tools. So if, if, if someone, if someone uh, asked me this question, like who is using machine learning in their business? I would say maybe the FANG companies, you know, like Google, Amazon, those big companies are using machine learning properly, right. but all the mid tier businesses and uh, and small businesses there are some small businesses who are not even using proper software they are not even using having a proper mobile app so at present the utilization of ai and ml is very very low very very low in the industry yeah. but since it's a buzzword and since this big you know these big companies are trend setters Right. So since these big companies have started doing it, now all these uh, small companies or mid-tier companies, they have this pressure that they want to onboard AI and machine learning 
in their technology stack. So what's going to happen is next five years, all these companies will have big budgets being allocated in AI and ML. And you will see many things, many different things happen. For example, uh, IVR, right? IVR, like if you have a customer care department, you, you are, you're using some service, you make a phone call and usually they say, okay, to solve this problem, press one. To solve this problem, press two. So that's like a very static, like rule-based question answer mechanism. So you, all of those will be replaced by the chatbots. Chatbots, which are smarter. Nowadays, you find tools like Google Dialogflow, for example, Amazon has Alex. So all these frameworks, people will start using and they will start using uh, onboarding the smart chatbots in their customer care divisions. You will see things like autonomous car. My friend has a Tesla and I see Tesla can, he can call Tesla from his parking lot to wherever he's standing. So once he was in a grocery store, it was raining crazy and he has his little kid with him and his car was parked so far, he did not have umbrella. So now he calls his Tesla. Tesla in a traffic, in a rainy situation, very messy situation, his car came all the way from a distance to him on its own. So autonomous car is a thing, it's a reality. Don't think this is some talk, some presentation. In next five years, at least in US, I will see autonomous cars where people will not be driving those cars uh, and the car, car will be driving on their own. Then um, machine learning will be used for predictive analytics, you know? So your, we just gave the example of, okay, my Diwali sale is coming in my store. Where should I employ more staff? Machine learning models will tell you exactly, okay, this is the store where you'll see maximum traffic. It's like, you know, in India, we have this astrologist, this Jyotishi. So these, these are like technological Jyotishis who will tell you the future. Yeah. <laughs> so I see so many beautiful things happening. Amazing things will happen in the space of natural language processing. So nowadays, when you are typing an email on Google, on Gmail, you know, Gmail will try to autocomplete your sentence. Right. So you will see this kind of applications being used more and more in more tools, basically, where right. you want to write something, it will autocomplete. Uh, there is a model called GPT-3, uh, which is making a buzz. And GPT-3 is a language model built by OpenAI, which is yet another Elon Musk, uh, like a crazy uh, technology venture. And what GPT-3 can do is it can write a poem. So machine learning is going into creative space as well, where a computer will be able to write a poem. My wife built a, a uh, prepared this koala painting behind the scene. Yeah. Maybe that painting will be prepared by a computer. Now, see, when I talk about GP3, almost it sounds very scary because people are like, oh, are we going to lose our jobs? <laughs> and I, I say that if you look at humans, we are always good at um, optimizing processes. You know, if you look at industrial revolu uh, revolution, the whole IT revolution, when IT came in, uh, in, in 2000, so many people lost their job. You know, so many people who are doing record keeping, they lost their job, but then new jobs were emerged. Now look at IT overall, how many new jobs are there, right? There is digital marketing specialist, there is software engineer, QA, data scientist, data analyst, so many jobs are there. Similarly, AI will, AI will definitely kill traditional jobs. I think the AI will have a big impact on BPO industry. BPO industry where you are, let's say, are doing some manual work, right? So many industry, you know, that they, they have a document like medical transcription business, for example. They have a document, they read something, they write it. Now that will be replaced by OCR, you know, optical character recognition and AI. When you combine these two, these right. two can do automatic data extraction. So if you're in that kind of industry, you need to acquire new skills and you right. need to 
reskill yourself so that you can survive in the future. But overall, in the future, there will be more jobs. It's just that we need to be vigilant. We need to be learning new skills day by day. And we need to be learning something that is futuristic. AI and ML is futuristic. RPA is another thing, you know, robotic process automation. Right. So these are the futuristic careers and you need to be prepared and you, do, you don't need to have again that bias that I cannot do it. Just start learning little by little, maybe half an hour, you know, yeah. have some specific time, half an hour or one hour I'll spend in learning something new. Even today, I have been in industry for 15 years. Every single day I spend at least one hour. Okay. Some days I spend more than it at least one hour in learning something new. As long as you have that spirit, you will be fine. Yeah, I totally agree with you, the world, right? You know, uh, in a couple of days back, I was reading in some article, right? That, you know, an institute in Singapore has uh, found out, uh, you know, a, a way to interact with plants, apparently. And that particular device can let you know what requirements are there, you know, for the, from, the, from the plant side, you know, it needs some water, it needs some nutrition, right? So, uh, and uh, there was a significant uh, involvement of, you know, AI and ML there is what I've read. So great things are there in the future. And I also agree with the point that, you know, you need to keep learning, you know, nothing is permanent or you need to keep evolving with the environment. Uh, so we have a question from the audience and I would like to, you know, let you know that. Uh, so what the question is, uh, I have learned data visualization tool Tableau and I have experience in Excel. Do I have to still learn Python and build a career in business analytics? Okay. So depends what role you're targeting. Le Let's say if you are targeting a business analyst role, then it's okay if you don't know tools that much. There are two roles, business analyst and data analyst. Business right. analyst is more on a business side. They know the business, they know the domain. They are good in communication, presentation, all those soft skills. Yeah. Then they also know Tableau and Excel, which is good. So if you're just targeting business analyst career, even if you don't learn Python, it's okay. But if you're targeting data analyst career, which is little bit more on technology side, then you need to learn two things, Python and SQL. Right. I think uh, our audience has got uh, you know, the reply for this particular question. Uh, the other question is, uh, the, see a lot of people have this you know stigma on mind that we need to do a lot of courses i need to have some certificates right and these certificates have to be from reputed institutions right only then i can excel okay but now there is a lot of content available and legit content available that like you've been created regarding data science as python and all you know how do people get this sense of security that you know they, they can go ahead with this knowledge confidently to any organization you know and just excel there? That's a very good question. And it's very spot on because I think tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I'm going to publish a video on my channel about right. importance of certificates in your career. Oh, wow. So you asked the question at a very right time. Just yesterday, I, was, I, I prepared the video and I can definitely talk about it. All the, the recording is still fresh uh, in my mind. I mean, I mean, uh, you, uh, you must have prepared a content around this. I didn't, I don't really want to jinx it, but if you can give a bit around it, you know, it will be really helpful. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, don't worry. I, as I said, like I'm doing YouTube just purely out of passion. So for me, even if my video doesn't get many views, I'm fine. Uh, yeah. see, first of all, people need to understand that the certificate will not get them a job. Yeah. Okay. When you do a certificate, many institutes, uh, let's say if you're doing some course on Coursera, you don't get certificate just like that. You have to finish some assignment. Then you get a certificate. So if you have a certificate, what it shows that you have earned it, you have put some effort. Right. But what's more important is your skills, your knowledge, your performance in the interview. I myself have been, inter I have interviewed thousands of people so far. I have been interviewing, I started interviewing 10 years back actually, 10 or 12 years back, okay? So I have interviewed so many people so far and whenever I'm looking at the resume and if there is some certificate, 
I give zero credit, zero credit. You don't get any marks, like any plus points for your certificate. Even if the certificate is from Stanf from Stanford, you don't get any credit. Okay. So understand that certificate is not going to give you a job or even you don't get an interview call based on certificate. The way you get an interview call is based on your project portfolio. What kind of projects you have mentioned in your resume. You also need to do something special such as let's say you are contributing to open source and you have merged 10 pull requests in pandas open source let's say and if if there is a line like that in your in your resume and if if i am the interviewer i see the line i will immediately tell my hr that okay let's call this person because that that special contribution contribution matters let's say you have contributed to stack overflow and in stack overflow you have 50000 reputation points that to me is more important than your certificate even that is more important than in even your degree so nitin it it may seem like far uh, like little exaggerated but i do not give any weightage even to a degree you could be from iit or stanford you don't get any plus point for that you have to perform during the interview so preparing well for the interview is very important to get a job and doing extra activities such as you are let's say participating in kegel competition you have won few kegel competition you have won some badges you have some special rank on stack overflow you are contributing to tensorflow for example or if not tensorflow some open source con uh, co community and you have let's say done some meaningful projects for a data science career don't show me that you have you have built a classification on titanic or iris flower data set that is very usual everyone has that you need to do something unique i i advise to people that you know people will say okay unless we get a job how are we going to build a real life experience and i will say okay let's say you have graduated you don't have a job yet or let's say even if you are in college can you go to nearby ngo you know try to reach out to some non profit and say i'm data science enthusiast i know coding can i help you in your you know in your day to day business problems and that way you can get real exposure you will not be paid but those projects on your resumes are going to leave a very positive impression on interviewer's mind so yes so certificates and especially don't go for the expensive certificates nowadays especially in pandemic so many ad tech companies have popped up you know so many ad tech companies i get so many emails for sponsorship right and everyone is getting into online education space and unfortunately there are many institutes who are just trying to rip money out of you so don't fall into that trap right. see if you are motivated let me tell you this you can get all your education for free i am a self learned i i okay i work in my company whatever but i don't have any data science statistics math degree i learned everything on my own so if you are enough motivated all the resources that you want are available free on internet right uh, that's really a wonderful thing to know daval i mean i uh, i'm truly impressed by you know the drive and passion you carry along while you do your work and you say that you've been doing this for so long and it's not so easy to keep things you know you know attach to things and go on for so long right i mean i truly applaud for it and uh, and i just i would like to say it was a truly great session i thoroughly enjoyed it and our audience must have you know they've been really crazy going regarding the data sciences and you know they'll perhaps pop up to your channel and see some more videos and they'll start prepping things right and uh, we will truly honored to have you here daval and uh, you know uh, and really happy to kick start our entire campaign with your session you know as we say it's kick started to data, data sciences but it's uh, essentially kick started to our entire campaign and mm -hmm. we would really love to have you back some day again you know talking all about the data sciences ai ml stuff right maybe you'll mm -hmm. probably be 
at a much bigger position in uh, you know bloomberg as probably having your own company right <laughs> so we truly <laughs> i i we truly you know wish you the best of your endeavors and we hope to see you again thank you a lot for joining us today on the session thank you very much and you guys are doing great in terms of starting this kind of events especially around diversity and inclusion and uh, i want to say one final final thing which is if you are from a minority background let's say you are a woman or you are not privileged you know some people are not even financially privileged they think that they cannot become a data scientist because they don't have money or they cannot do this because they are a woman i want to tell to all those people in the spirit of this whole diversity and inclusion theme that you can do it you need to tell this to yourself every day when you wake up in the morning that i can do it there are resources there is a support system there are so many groups being run around empowering women or empowering minority groups in technology that you will in fact if you are from minority group you are at advantage because the support that you will get is amazing Yeah. so do not think that because of your background because of your physical condition even you cannot do it you can do it just one step at a time is not get to happen overnight take a step one by one and i wish you all the best of luck thank you thanks a lot dhawan glad to have you here bye bye